What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and this past week was a very quiet one, but that's because next week will be insanely busy with the release of the new AirPods 3, the new MacBook Pros, and all new software. So we're gonna talk about everything happening next week here in a moment, but first, let's recap this week and discuss iOS 15.1, and the upcoming iOS 15.2. All right, so like I mentioned, this week was pretty quiet and boring aside from Monday. So on Monday, of course, we saw Apple Stream, their Unleashed event, where they introduced the new M1 Pro and M1 Max chips, which will first be used in the new MacBook Pros. So we got both the 14 inch and 16 inch redesigned MacBook Pro with those chips inside. Along with that, we got the long awaited AirPods 3 and also some new colors for the HomePod Mini. And then after that, we saw the release of iOS 15.1 RC, macOS Monterey RC, and also the release candidate build for all of the other regular software releases that we get from Apple. But then things went quiet and we didn't really receive anything else for the rest of the week, aside from a second RC build of iOS 15.1 for the iPad Mini 6 and a second RC build for macOS Monterey. So we don't have a ton to discuss in this video, so this week's follow-up might be a little bit shorter than usual, but I still wanted to recap iOS 15.1 RC and talk about some of the changes along with how it's been performing for me and also for you guys. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is actually a new feature in iOS 15.1 that I have not covered at all over the past month that we've been in beta testing. I think I may have mentioned it one time, but I never actually showed it in action. And that is a new shortcut action for text overlay. So if we go and create a new shortcut here and we search for overlay you will see that we have overlay text now. So that is new in iOS 15.1. And when you add that to a shortcut, you can see you could change the font, you could change the font size, the font color, you can rotate the text, you can outline the text, and you can even set the sizing to be proportional or absolute which is really cool. And you can see you can choose from all these different fonts in here if you want to. And the reason I think this is cool is because I actually made a meme maker right here. So if we go into this, you can see this is how I created my little meme generator. And here's how it works. So you can use this to create things like memes. You can create, you know, watermarks. You can watermark your images if you want to really quickly. But if we go ahead and do this right here, you can see I ask to say something up top. So you can just type in whatever text you want. I'm just gonna type in something, you know, it's not gonna really be a meme. I just wanna show you how it works and then it's gonna ask me for the text on the bottom and I'll just put hello again this isn't meant to be a funny meme I just want to type something in quick and you can see there it generates it just like so and you could save that meme and send it to other people which is pretty cool so again this is just a pretty cool way to create memes really quickly or watermark images really quickly if you want to maybe for like Instagram or just for social media if you don't want people stealing your photos you could do that although I do wish there was a way to set the opacity of the text that would be a lot more beneficial for watermarking but that is a new feature here in iOS 15.1 inside of shortcuts and I just wanted to touch on that because I did not do so previously but as we discussed in my what's new video for iOS 15.1 RC really nothing else was changed in the software aside from the build number and potentially some back-end bug fixes but after reading through some of your guys's comments on that video and also on social media and discord it seems like one of the biggest bugs that we've been facing throughout 15.1 and really all of iOS 15 has actually been solved and that is the storage bug. So if I go in here to my settings and go to general iPhone storage, a lot of people had issues right here where it showed the inaccurate amount of storage being used. And if you guys watched my what's new video, you would know that it actually happened to me for the very first time on RC on the RC build, but it ended up fixing itself. So it appears that bug has now been fixed. And then we also have other bug fixes in this RC build and of course the final build as well, including CarPlay issues, the Apple Music pausing issues. So some people got the 15 second bug once again on 15.1 beta 4, but that appears to be fixed now. The shortcuts automation bug where it shows an automation failed even if it didn't, that's also been fixed. So basically if you had like the dynamic wallpapers set up and it ran and it, sh it actually changed your wallpaper but it showed that it failed as a notification that has also been fixed here in 15.1 and speaking of that dynamic wallpapers shortcut if you guys had issues with this you may want to set this to the limit and set it to get one photo so i did just recently make a video on that and some people were saying that it prompted them to pick a photo 
every single time this ran. So if you want to fix that, just set the limit to one photo and that should fix your issue. Now, Apple did also say to expect issues with the phone and the home applications in the release notes for the RC build, but they did fix the voiceover bug where you could not activate alarms correctly in the clock application. So I've not seen anybody have issues with the phone application or the home application, anything that was actually mentioned in the release notes. So I'm assuming those are not very widespread and that's probably why they are still remaining issues with 15.1. Now, as far as performance goes, performance is great. I mean, really the only time I have issues now in 15.1 is with third-party applications. And I've actually had this issue recently, really over the past week, maybe week or two, I've had issues with third-party applications just freezing up. So it happens a lot when I multitask and I go out of one app and then back into the application, it just freezes up. So I noticed this with Facebook, I noticed this with DraftKings and multiple other third-party applications. So it's pretty strange and that's really the only complaint I have as far as performance goes here on 15.1. And I would assume those are just issues with the application itself and not with the software, because again, it only happens in third-party applications. And as far as battery life goes, like I said earlier this week, don't expect any real changes to battery life at all with this update. And after using this all week, I have not been able to tell any difference in battery life from beta four or even from 15.0.1 or 15.0.2. Now, if you were having battery drain, that could be solved with 15.1, but I was not facing any type of battery drain issues on any of my devices, so I cannot speak on that. But as far as battery life goes overall, do not expect a big change when you update to 15.1. All right, so now what is next for Apple? And on Monday, October 25th, Apple has confirmed that macOS Monterey will be released then. So I would expect to see iOS 15.1 and all of the other major software releases on that Monday as well. However, there is the possibility of iOS 15.1, iPadOS 15.1, and all of the others coming later in the week since macOS Monterey has almost never been on the same schedule as iOS and iPadOS over the past few months. So I would still expect it on Monday, but do not be surprised to see it come maybe on Tuesday or sometime later in the week, just because of that wonky schedule comparing iOS and macOS. And then of course, one day after macOS Monterey and potentially all the other software releases on the 26th, that is when we will be seeing the new MacBook Pros arrive and also the AirPods 3 and those new HomePod colors. So I did order a 14 inch and a 16 inch MacBook Pro and also the AirPods 3. So expect coverage on Tuesday and throughout the week on those. And then also next week, we might be seeing iOS 15.2 beta one released to register developers. So I would not be surprised to see that come sometime mid to late next week. So Apple moves quick. And of course, if we get 15.2 beta one, at the end of this month, that means we should see 15.2 release sometime at the end of November, potentially into the early parts of December. Of course, it depends on what all we get in that software and how long the beta testing lasts, but I would expect to see 15.2 beta one get released as early as next week. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest on iOS 15.1 and what to expect next from Apple. So next week should be a very exciting one. And if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more coverage on iOS 15 and those new Apple products coming next week. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.